Welcome to the OmniSite tutorial for Crystal Ball Backup Pump Control. To begin, disable the Crystal Ball with the Intelligent Key. Allow enough time for the Crystal Ball to complete its communication sequence. The ready to transmit light should be lit before proceeding to the next step. Now, power down your device and control panel. Open your control panel so you can access the Crystal Ball terminal blocks. You are now ready to wire up your 4 to 20 milliamp level transducer into analog input 1. The OmniSight transducer has a red power lead, a blue signal lead, and a yellow shield lead. You will also notice a breather tube, which is designed to allow the sensor to operate properly. The OmniSight level transducer is a two-wire loop-powered device. You will begin by landing the red power lead on the positive 12 volt power supply terminal for analog input 1. Next, you will land the blue signal positive wire on the signal positive terminal of analog input 1. This is the right hand terminal on the bottom terminal block. The next step is to wire a jumper wire between the signal negative terminal and the negative terminal of the 12 volt power supply for analog input 1. This jumper completes the power loop and allows current to flow through your level transducer device. Once this wiring is complete, verify that your breather tube is not interfering with any of your other connections and that the filter is firmly in place on the end of the tube. This protects the sensor from moisture which may damage sensitive electronics. Finally, the shield wire must be attached to the panel ground. This ensures that your signal wires are properly protected from current inductance which may lead to false signal readings. Due to the short exposed length of the shield wire, it may be easiest to use a wire nut or other type of splice connection to connect this lead to the ground inside your panel. Here I am using a push-in style wire nut and a length of green wire which I will land directly to a ground terminal that I will locate inside my panel. Make sure all wire connections are snug to ensure proper operation of your device. You are now ready to wire your crystal ball output relays into your pump control circuit. You will need to supply control voltage into the common pin of each output relay that you will be using. I am using a jumper that will connect the common pin of all four output relays, but this may differ for your installation. If you are only going to be controlling two pumps, you may simply connect the common pin of outputs 1 and 2 to your control voltage. For this tutorial, I will be sourcing my control voltage from the output terminal of my phase monitor relay. Since these outputs will be in parallel with your primary controller, you will want to source your control voltage from the same place your primary controller gets its voltage. Make sure all connections are snug to ensure continuous, safe operation. Now we will connect each output relay to the automatic operation circuit for each pump. Make sure to connect each wire to the normally open pin on each output relay. This is the vertical pin on the right hand side. Make sure all your connections are snug to ensure proper operation. You will now land each output lead into the automatic operation circuit for each pump. This should parallel your primary controller. 
Here, I'm landing the lead from output 1 onto the auto side of my handoff auto switch for pump 1. Once again, ensure your connections are snug. Repeat this process using the lead from output relay 2, landing it in the auto circuit for your second pump. For this tutorial, I am landing the lead from output 3 into the auto circuit for my third pump. You will omit this step when working with a two-pump system. This completes your wiring, so you may now close your panel. Now is a good time to place your level transducer into your wet well. Power your control panel back on and wait for your crystal ball to complete its systems check. You are now going to program the crystal ball for pump control using the four pump control menu buttons. The first menu you will be using is pump bypass. This menu will allow you to tell the crystal ball which pumps run and whether or not they will be controlled automatically. Make sure to configure each pump correctly for your installation. For this tutorial, I am setting all three pumps to run with automatic control. Once your settings are complete, select Previous Menu and press Enter. Now select the next menu option, Pump Settings. In this menu, you will first tell the crystal ball which type of sensors you are using to control your pumps. Since you are using a level transducer, you will want to select 4 to 20 milliamps. You will notice the number of pumps you are using is indicated in this menu, which reflects the setting from the pump bypass menu. There are a few other settings in this menu, which are explained in the crystal ball user's manual, including grease control, alternate, pump scheme, and pump failure alarm. As a backup pump controller in a lift station, leave these options set to their default settings. Next, select Setup Analog Inputs and press Enter. Here you will be configuring Analog Input 1, which you previously wired up with your level transducer. The first setting is Decimal Position, which allows you to adjust the accuracy of your level output display. Make sure to select a setting that works for your installation. For this tutorial, I've set it to display 1 tenths. Next, enter the scaling for your level transducer. The OmniSight level transducer that we are using in this tutorial is scaled for 0 to 20 feet or 0 to 240 inches. The scaling you enter here should match the scaling that is indicated on your transducer device. My settings are 0 to 240. Next, you may specify a low alarm value a high alarm value, and a dead band if you use either of these alarm features. Additionally, you may specify the alarm delay, which the crystal ball will wait before signaling an alarm. The final setting allows your level transducer to control output relay 4 for a local audio or visual alarm. Once these settings are complete, Return to the previous menu or press exit. Now that your pump settings are complete, you're ready to move on to the other pump control buttons. The next menu option you will select is Level Setup. Depending on the number of pumps you are controlling, you will have several options in this menu. The first of which will be Stop Level. Set this value slightly greater than or equal to the stop level that is set in your primary controller. Next, you will specify the lead level, the lag level in a two-pump system, and the second lag level in a three-pump system. As a backup pump controller, you will want to set the control levels for the crystal ball 
above the levels from your primary controller. This will ensure that the crystal ball does not interfere with ordinary operation by your primary controller, but in the event that the primary controller fails, the crystal ball will be able to act as a backup. Now return to the previous menu, and the final option is level test. When you press this button, you will see the current level output from your level transducer displayed. You may adjust this level as a simulation using the arrow keys. The status of the pumps is indicated on the screen, and as you adjust the simulated level, the pumps should react accordingly. If your pumps are currently set to the auto position, they will turn on and off with this simulation. Notice as the level reaches the stop point that was set in the previous menus, pump 1 is still indicated to be on. As soon as the level falls below the stop level, pump 1 is indicated as off. When you are satisfied that your settings are correct and your pumps behave as expected, you can now re-enable your crystal ball and your setup is complete. You can now watch as the crystal ball controls the pumps, turning them on and off at the levels specified in the level setup menu. Observe that as the water reaches the lead level, pump 1 comes on with output relay 1. As the water continues to rise because the inflow outpaces the pump and the lag level is reached, output relay 2 on the crystal ball turns on and the lag pump comes on to assist the lead pump. Now as the water recedes and reaches the stop level, you will see the output relays turn off and the pumps stop pumping. You will notice that during the next cycle, as the well refills, the crystal ball will properly alternate between the pumps, using the second pump as the primary pump, when the water reaches the lead level again. This concludes our crystal ball as a backup pump controller tutorial. Please contact our technical support department if you have any further questions about using your crystal ball as a pump controller.